Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome again to the new lecture of this course, uh, Properties of Materials. So, let us just briefly recap the previous lecture. So, in the previous lecture, we looked at uh, one the calculation of principal stresses. sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 which, which are basically from this equation sigma p cube minus i 1 sigma p square minus i 2 sigma p minus i 3 is equal to 0, where i 1, i 2 and i 3 are stress variants. Basically, they are invariants of stresses independent of orientation of axis and sigma uh, when you calculate this i 1, i 2, i 3 which are given in terms of uh, normal and shear stresses. Uh, so, I 1, I 2 and I 3 are function of shear stresses sigma and tau and sigma x, y or z and tau i j. You can calculate the three values of sigma p. These three values of sigma p are nothing but magnitudes of sigma 1 and sigma 2 and sigma 3 and sigma and I 1, I 2 and I 3 are also related to these values. So, I 1 is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3. So, you can cross check that I 1 was also equal to sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z. So, all these three values should match. I 2 was equal to minus of sigma 2 sigma 3 minus of sigma 3 sigma 1 minus of sigma 1 sigma 2 and I 4 I 3 was equal to minus of sigma sorry plus sigma 1 1 sigma 2 2 and sigma 3 3 so, or right or alternatively just write it as sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3. So, these i values should match with the i values that you get from the products of summation or products of uh, sigma x, sigma y, sigma z as well as tau i j's. So, this is what we did and then we also look at the uh, definitions of true and engineering strain. So, true strain is uh, epsilon ln of L f divided by L naught, where engineering strain is given as L f minus L naught divided by L naught. And the relation between the two is uh, epsilon is equal to ln of 1 plus e. And we also saw that this, that there is a cross, so the values of epsilon and e they correspond well with each other at very, very small strains generally below 0 0.01, but the moment you go to higher strains, uh, there is a strong divergence and E values are very different as compared to epsilon values. So, now let us look at the other differences between the uh, two strains and there are other differences such as first one is. So, the first difference is true strain are equal and opposite in tension and compression. So, let us say if you go from L 1 to 2 L 1 and then go back to L 1, they will remain the same. So, this is tension, this is compression, they will remain the same. We will see that in the in the example. And then another difference is true strains are additive. So, in the first one, true strains are equal and opposite, but engineering strains are not. True strains are additive, but engineering strains are 
or not. So, which means epsilon net is equal to epsilon 1 to 2 let us say plus 2 to 3. So, you go from one step to second step, first pass, second step to third step, second third pass and so on and so forth. And if you cal compute the sum, the sum will be equal to overall strain. Let us say if you go from uh, n minus 1 to n, so this would be 1 to n. So, this would sum, but engineering strain will not. And the third is volume changes um, is related to sum of three strains. As we will see in plaster deformation, delta V is equal to 0, which means epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 should be equal to 0 or epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z should be equal to 0. But E 1 plus E 2 plus E 3 is not equal to 0. So, there is an anomaly between these. So, this obeys the principle of net no net volume change, but this does not obey. So, there is a problem there. So, let us say, let us go to problem number 1, let us say. So, example number, first example is that let us verify, verify the tension compression problem. tension compression equivalence. So, let us say we have L naught of 1 meter, then we have L 1 of 2 meter. So, L naught goes to L 1 of 2 meter, then L 1 goes back to L naught of 1 meter. So, this is tension and this is compression. All right. So, if I examine the true strain, so during tension epsilon t will be equal to L n of L f divided by L naught which is 2 divided by 1 which is equal to 0 0.693 and during compression. epsilon c will be equal to ln of 1 divided by 2 L f is. So, in this case it is going from 2 to 1. So, 1 is the final length and 2 is the initial length and this will be minus of 0 0.693. So, you can see that these are equal and opposite. Now, let us see the example of uh, engineering strain. So, during tension I can see epsilon t sorry E t is equal to L f minus L naught which is 2 minus 1 divided by 1 this is equal to 1 all right. During compression E c is equal to 1 minus 2 divided by 1 which is equal to um, uh, 1 minus 2 divided by 2 which is equal to minus 0 0.5. So, you can see that not only these are different, so these are not, not the same because these are very large strains, these are not equivalent and there is a problem. That is why true strain is a better measure of strain than the engineering strain. Second example, let us take off.
let us take that of uh, uh, additiveness. Okay. So, let us say we have a piece of wire Okay. this wire has initial length of 1 meter we stretch it to L 1 is equal to 1.5 meter. So, this is pass 1 it goes through pass 2 to L 2 is equal to 2 meters. So, we can see that there is a net change from 1 to 2 meter in 2 passes. Okay. So, let us calculate the strain at every step and the overall strain and compare the two. So, let us first look at the case of true strain. So, when we calculate epsilon 1 to 2, it is ln of 1.5 divided by 1, which is 0 0.4055. And then we calculate epsilon 2 to 3, this is ln of 2 divided by 1.5, this is 0.2877 and as a result epsilon total will be equal to 0 0.4055 plus 0 0.2877, this should be equal to 0.693. And if I work out this epsilon total directly, then I go from 1 to 2 direct. So, this is ln of 2 divided by 1, which is 0 0.6932, and these two are equal, which means true strains are additive, right. Now, let us look at the example of engineering strain. Engineering strain is epsilon 1 to 2, this is equal to we are going from 1.5, uh, 1 to 1.5, so it is 1.5 minus 1 divided by 1, so this is 0 0.5. For the second pass, it is 2 minus 1.5 divided by 1.5, so this is equal to uh, 0.33. So, if I total them sorry this is e not epsilon my apologies okay so e total will be equal to did i write e earlier so e total is equal to 0 0.83 and what is e total direct that is e 1 2 3 then it is 2 minus 1 divided by 1 which is 1 and we can see that these two are not equal which means it is not additive. So, this is a problem with the true engineering strain. Now, let us look at the third and another issue of volume change. So, I will not do it completely, let us say we have initial dimensions of L x naught, L y naught, L z naught and the final dimensions are L x f, L x L y f, L z f. Okay. we need to calculate what is volume metric strain. Volumetric strain is delta V divided by V naught. So, if you calculate for engineering 1, then it is V f minus V naught divided by V naught. So, this is L x f L y f L z f minus L x naught L y naught L z naught divided by L x naught L y naught L z naught. And if you calculate delta v by v naught for true, 
this is L n of V f divided by sorry this is V f divided by V naught. So, this will be this will be L n of L f L x f Now, I will leave it here, I will ask you to prove that when volume change is equal to 0, then one can see that epsilon 1 plus epsilon, epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z is equal to 0 but the same is not true for so i will leave it to you to prove that okay so this is homework all right so what we have seen so far is basically we have looked at the we have looked at the differences between engineering and true strain we have looked at the true strains are equal and opposite that we have proved using this they are equivalent in tension and compression true stresses are additive and engineering strains are not additive and volume change riddle that you have to do yourself that in the plaster deformation when volume change is net volume change is equal to 0 it is represented by epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z is equal to 0 but e x plus e y plus e z is not equal to 0. So, now this is what the first part of this lecture is. Now, let us look at the concept of uh, what we call as small strains and shear strains. So, So, generally when a body deforms, okay, so generally when a body deforms, let us say this body when you deform it, this body may convert to a let us say a shape like this. Okay. But this the process through which this happens involves both translation and rotation of the elements or body parts you can say. Now, the strains have to be calculated in such a manner, so that you are able to do them independently of rotation and translation. So, you should look at the overall effect rather than getting into the nitty gritties of translation and rotation. So, a strain must overcome the combined uh, the, the individual translation and rotation effects. So, let us say we have a situation like this in which let us say this is x and y axis. Okay. We start with our body in this fashion. So, we have these four points. C D these four points get moved to let us say okay so let us say this is a prime b prime c prime and d prime all right let us say this length is initially d x small lengths and this is d y. So, let us say this point has moved by a translation u in this direction and v in y direction and the corresponding movement of this particular point from B C 
line is V plus del V y del x into d y. Similarly, the corresponding movement here is u plus uh, del u by del x into d x for a very small uh, translation okay. and this is d x. So, basically this is the extent of movement that we are having in x and y directions for. So, you can see that this b point does not move just by um, in this direction just by v, it also moves by another small amount which is del v. So, the, you can see there is a asymmetry, a point moves by different magnitudes as compared to the b point and so on and so forth. So, let us calculate what the strains are. So, epsilon x x let us say want, we want to calculate the macroscopic strain will be delta L divided by L naught and we can write this as A prime D prime minus A D divided by A D which is equal to A prime D prime by A D minus 1. For very small values of L strains sorry for very small strains one can write epsilon x x as so this is let us say let us just write this as a macroscopic strain okay so epsilon x x for very small strain will be equal to del u y del x into d x divided by d x. So, essentially it is del u by del x. Epsilon y y will be equal to del v by del y into d y divided by d y. This will be equal to del v by del uh, sorry y. Okay. Now, let us now see what the shear strains are. Shear strains are defined by at the small level. So, let us say if this is the angle theta, let us say if this is the part d x, if this is the part d y, then tan theta is equal to d x divided by d y and for very small small theta. So, this is gamma. Okay shear stress represented by gamma. So, we can say gamma is equal to theta which is equal to d x by d y let us say del x del y. Okay. So, using the same analogy for shear stresses in terms of uh, so basically here we need to work out strains in terms of angles between a d and a d prime a prime d prime um, sorry a, a, a d and a d prime and a b and let us say a b prime. So, this is a d and this is a d prime this is a b and this is a b uh, prime. Okay. So, if we do that sorry a a prime b prime it is not let me just correct it. So, it is a d and a prime d prime and a b and a prime b prime I am sorry. So, basically between this and that between this and this. So, if we now work out these strains. So, we can write the first one as del v by del x into d x divided by d x this will be equal to del v by del x and the second one will be del u by del y into d y divided by 
g y uh, this will be equal to del u by del y. Okay. So, the total shear strain then in that case which is gamma of y and x is equal to gamma of x. So, this is gamma x this is gamma y. So, this will be equal to gamma x plus gamma y and this will be equal to del v by del x plus del u by del y and this is also equivalent to let us say gamma x y. Okay. So, basically what has happened is here the, the process of rotation that has happened is you start from let us say this shape okay, and then the first thing that you do is that you have a shear and this allows okay so essentially it's come from here to here and then you create what we call as a so you have this shape now and this shape is now converted to which is the final transformation. So, if you combine these two essentially what you get is like this. So, you start with this shape and you end up with the green one. So, this is what we say is the shear and this will be rotation. So, this is shearing in this direction and this is rotating in this direction. So, we are combining the process of shear and rotation to the overall deformation that we see in the final shape. Okay. So, that is why these two shear strains have to be added one in the x another in the y they give you the net shear strain for a two dimensional body. So, let us say for a three dimensional body now so you have u, you have v, you have w okay, u for x, v for y and w for z. So, displacement is w in z direction, u is the displacement in x direction and v is the displacement in. So, these are displacements in along x, y and z directions. So, if you now write them then epsilon epsilon y y we know is equal to del v by del y. So, if I write gamma y z so we do not need to actually write this we just need to worry about gamma y z gamma y z is equal to gamma z y this is equal to del w divided by del y plus del v divided by del z. Similarly, I can write gamma x y which is equal to gamma y x. This is equal to gamma del v divided by del x plus del u divided by del y and if you want to write gamma z x sorry what have I written it should be gamma or delta gamma z x which is equal to gamma x z this will be equal to del z by del x plus del x by del z, uh, z sorry del w by del x and del u by del z. So, these will be the three shear strains six shear strains uh, which will be basically for the three dimensional body. So, then you can write a shear stress tensor shear strain tensor in the same way epsilon x x epsilon y x or x y 
epsilon x z or epsilon z x and then you can write epsilon x y, epsilon y x, epsilon y y, here you will have epsilon z z, this will be epsilon z y or epsilon y z, this will be epsilon y z or epsilon z y, this will be epsilon y z or sorry z x, z x, x z or z x and this will be z y. So, this will be the strain tensor that we can write. So, we will stop here, we will come back to this uh, and especially the transformation of strain tensor to different axes in the next class. And uh, so, what we have done is basically we have looked at the concept of uh, shear strain uh, which is present in, in solids deformation and we also look at the, looked at the uh, differences between the true and uh, engineering strain in this lecture. So, thank you very much. Thank you.